What's up guys, it's Jake Adams with Reef Builders. And right now I am on a boat speeding towards the rock islands of Palau looking for beautiful corals. But the scenery is equally incredible, so check it out. Boy does it feel good to finally get into the water after traveling such a long way to see the corals of Palau. And the first coral that I'm greeted with is this massive sprawling super colony of Diploastria. This is a very common coral but I've never seen so much of it in one place. The water in this spot is a little bit green and a little bit cloudy but this is to be expected from a semi-enclosed coral lagoon that is surrounded by sheer cliff walls with lush rainforest growing right up to the edge. This is a truly magical place and it's as beautiful topside as it is underwater. As I pass a narrow opening into the coral lagoon, my eyes dart back and forth looking at all the diversity of corals. This is a lagoon environment, so this is a home for very peculiar corals, and it doesn't take long for my eyes to be drawn to a coral that I have not seen in the wild before. Growing in just 10 feet of water in this enclosed coral lagoon, this is a colony of Pavona decusata, also known as the potato chip coral. It gets its name from its fine wavy branches, which has a very unique texture and is unlike any coral growing around it. This is a very popular coral in aquariums that grows fast and it's just really cool to finally see it face to face. Growing right next to it is a very peculiar colony of Montipora that is unlike anything I've ever seen in the wild or in aquariums. At first glance, it looks very similar to Montipora palawanensis and other very gnarly species. And it wasn't until I got home and checked my references that I realized this was the first colony of Montipora meandrina that I've ever come across. It has these really gnarly nodules all across the surface that do not develop into a specific type of pattern and these really robust irregular branches. Very cool to see this coral. Of course the lagoon has a lot of cool fish and here's a rare school of sailfin tangs, a species of surgeon fish that is usually seen alone or in pairs. The coolest fish that I saw in this lagoon is the anchor tusk fish, Chiridon anchorago. It's basically an overgrown wrasse with a snaggle teeth that it uses to dig through the reef looking for food. I make my way back through the very narrow entrance to this sheltered coral garden the Coral Lagoon has one more surprise in store for me. Right where the water rushes into and out of the Coral Lagoon are some colonies of Melithea sea fans. This non-photosynthetic coral seems out of place in such a shallow water environment, but its red branches and white polyps are a sight to see. That was a fabulous location for spotting some shallow water corals, so we're gonna drive to another spot and see what else we can find. This location is very different from the previous one. It is located much closer to the open ocean with clean, clear water that washes over this reef on a regular basis. This particular reef environment is dominated by small polyp stony corals, in particular Montipora. There are fields of Montipora capricornus everywhere and in between them and in other regions there's a huge diversity of Montipora from plating to branching types, encrusting and everything in between. 
The colors of the corals are somewhat washed out in the plain white sunlight with most species appearing a muted gray or brown. But closer inspection reveals a lot of color if you know how to look. There are purple species of parietes, colored polyps, but really this is a collage of shapes and textures. It's fascinating to see how the plating and encrusting corals and the branching Montipora all compete for space with each other and some species are even plating and branching in the same colony. Every square inch of this coral reef is occupied by some type of corals and in some places the branching and plating Montiporas are so intertwined it's hard to know where one coral ends and the other begins. As I let myself drift in the slow but strong steady current I come across a surprise of a very different kind. This is not a coral but in fact a truly vascular plant, the giant seagrass. Seagrasses are most often found growing in soft sediment, so it's a nice surprise to see them growing right out of the stony coral reef. The wavy leaves of the giant seagrass make a nice contrast to the otherwise solid coral colonies. As I drift along down this reef that is dominated by Montipora, I finally come across a colony of Acropora. This is a colony of Acropora digitifera, and is easily recognized by its finger-like branches and a bright blue tip at the end of each branch. This young coral is probably between one and two years of age, but it will grow to become a beautiful colony in no time. The last animal that I encountered on this drift dive is a beautiful, colorful blue linkia starfish growing right among the coral branches in very shallow water. It's time to start heading back, but I have one more spot to check out on the way home. This turned out to be a beautiful corner with some really fantastic corals. I'm back in cloudy water, but you know it's going to be a great coral swim when the first coral I see is a beautiful colony of green pectinia coral. Just a few feet away is a wonderful mixed colony of Lobophilia. These coral polyps are different colors because they are not from the same coral, but over time have grown together to appear as one single colony. There are red polyps, brown polyps, green polyps, and everything in between. This area turned out to be a virtual paradise of Lobophilia. I have seen some huge lobophilia colonies before, but never have I seen so many colors of lobos in one single place. We also saw some blue lobos, spotted, red, and there was even one amazing colony of multicolored lobophilia. Slightly deeper water, the habitat became dominated by large colonies of Echinopora. This coral thrives in sheltered environments with low water flow. Growing right next to the Echinopora were several large colonies of Pectinia. Also known as spiny cup coral, this species is rather rare and often seen in caves but in very small numbers. So it was a real treat to see some large colonies in a habitat where these corals are truly thriving. The standout fish of this environment is the eight-banded butterfly fish, Chidodon octofasciatus. What's unique about these two is that they are the special yellow color form that is only found in green water and coastal environments. What you're looking at is not an anemone, but a very fleshy species of large polyp stony coral. The long tentacle plate coral, Heliofungia actiniformis, has a name that means it's literally shaped like an anemone. The abundant and copious long tentacles can be home to shrimp and fish and all kinds of critters, but generally it takes a much larger coral to harbor these, and these particular long tentacle plate corals did not have any. We tend to think of moon and favid corals as coming from high environments, but this colony was right at home in this low flow sheltered reef system. 
So I want to zoom out a little bit and show you the reef system that these corals were found in. There's just a huge kaleidoscope of different corals from Lobophilias to Leptoceras, disc corals, fungias, favids, all kinds of different things. Really, really cool corals, all seen here at a shallow snorkeling depth. But these corals are found right on the edge of a ledge that drops down for probably about 50 feet. Those wire corals are really tempting me to go down there, so I'm going to have to come back and scope out what's down there when I bring some scuba gear. So that about wraps it up for my first adventure in Palau and coming face to face with so many different corals and so many unique habitats. If you enjoy this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, definitely subscribe because this is the first adventure in Palau, but it definitely won't be the last. So stay tuned and see you guys on the next one.